tell the audience a little bit about your experience uh, with a vision. I think it was a vision of Padre Pio. Right. So that vision of Padre Pio um, was while I was serving in the military. So mm -hmm. I was a chemistry professor at the Air Force Academy mm -hmm. and training for a race called the Pikes Peak Ascent. Had a goal, the goal to break three hours on the mountain. So it's a half marathon up a mountain from 8,500 feet to 14,115 feet. Wow. Trained on it all that mountain all summer, prayed on that mountain all summer. Um, as we already established, practicing Catholic, had all those weapons in my arsenal for power, uh, the rosary, praying up and down the mountain, as well as the intercessory prayer. And so, you know, when you line up for a race up a mountain, intercessory prayer comes in handy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, need, you need some help. As Bishop Paprocki says about life runners, when you're wearing a, a shirt that has a cross on the front and the Holy Spirit on the front and remember the unborn on the back, you are accompanied by saints and angels. I mean, you are doing God's work. You are planting and watering while you move. People are going to see that witness and while you're wearing your witness. So this is pre-life runners. This, this story is 2006, but filled with faith. Mm -hmm. Started the race, the... The, the encounter with St. Pio is built around six prayers. The first prayer at the starting line was a prayer of thanksgiving. Like, thank you, Lord, to be able to chase after this goal. Um, the second prayer is when I was in a fog at the top, literally a fog at the top of the mountain, all locked in. I couldn't see any of the milestones to chase down this goal. And so the second prayer was a prayer of, hey, I need a hand here. I mean, I need, I need eyes that can see through this fog. I need confidence. And after that second prayer, someone behind me real clearly said, hey, we are 10 minutes from the top. We're going to break three hours. So exactly what I prayed for, I went, you know, fantastic. Got that confidence boost. The, the third prayer is I could hear people at the top. And it was frustrating because I was still locked in this fog. Oh. And, and I, my prayer was, Lord, you know, I surrender this goal to you. Like, if I'm going to miss this by seconds because I'm in a fog, I'm going to trust that that's your will. Because I've done everything and I'll continue to do everything to reach this goal for your glory. And if we break this three-hour goal, Lord, you know I'm going to proclaim your glory through this fog. And right after I finished that prayer, um, that same, wow, we're, we're five minutes from the top. Like this, this person behind me, we're, we're nearing 14,000 feet. You know, speaking up there, anyone that's driven the top of Pike's Peak, just walking up there, it's oh, hard to talk. The oxygen. You it's... got it. So this this confident voice, it was surprising. Like, it really baffled me that why does this person just go around? They sounded fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's then not even huffing or puffing. You that's got it. Strange. And then the, the, the fourth prayer was I could see the finish line. And it was through a big rocky path. The top of any 14,000 foot mountain mm -hmm. is not grass and trees, mm -hmm. boulder field from the erosion of the wind blowing on the top of that mountain. So all boulders. So it's very difficult to run up there. Um, you basically are kind of climbing over boulders to the finish. But with one minute to go, I could see that finish and it looked unrealistic to me. I was like, there's no way I'm going to get there in a minute. So I prayed for power. Come Holy Spirit. You mean it was that close to the three-hour mark? Yeah. I, so oh. when I looked at my watch, I was at 2.59. I had one oh, minute to traverse what they referred to as the 16 golden stairs. So it didn't seem possible to me. I trained up there, like practically not possible. So I prayed, come Holy Spirit. That was the fourth prayer. And I have no memory of that last minute uh, uh, during this going over the boulder field other than eyewitnesses. And I witnessed that I ran over these boulders. People don't run over the boulders. They climb over the boulders. And, you know, people were cheering and they could see that this goal, this break in three hours was something I was reaching for. Came across the finish line at 2.59.51. Wow. Collapsed at the finish line. Remember, we're, we only got, um, we're four we had two more prayers to go. Collapsed to the finish line. A reporter came over and asked me for a statement. So that was the most exciting finish of the day. Do you have a statement? And I'm I'm sitting on the ground, you know, drool down the side of my mouth. And I said, yeah, with one minute to go, I prayed, come Holy Spirit, carry me forth. And, you know, here I am. And she quoted it. Instead of the winner's picture in circulation, 430,000 newspapers for the greater Colorado Springs. Not the winner's picture, me collapse at the finish with that quote. 
Major Pat Castle, chemistry professor at the United States Air Force Academy, um, broke his goal by 10 seconds, quote, with one minute to go, prayed, come Holy Spirit, carried me forth. So all those people got evangelization, that the power of God at the top of a mountain, how biblical is that? Prayer number five, called my mom. She made me promise, call me that you're okay. Hey, mom, made it. I'm okay. Patrick, there's something really important I need to tell you. Did something unusual happen at two hours and 50 minutes into the race? Your mom asked My you mom that. asked that right out of the gate in the, in the conference. I said, yes, 250 was the first time that that person behind me, I looked at my watch, two hours and 50 minutes, said, hey, we're going to make it. We got 10 minutes to go. And I said, yeah, why? She goes, okay, I wrote it down. I asked St. Padre Pio to finish that race with you because I felt there was something wrong, something happening. I said, mom, yeah. And so prayer number six, I always say prayer number six is for all of us. Prayer number six is what are we going to do to carry forth in the inspiration that our faith is real, miracles really happen, the saints really are on this side, uh, you know, interceding on our behalf. And so prayer number six is to put our faith in action. James chapter one, verse 22, be doers of the word. What are we doing today when we have the miracle of seeing our children born, the miracle of seeing a sunrise, the miracle of seeing a sunset, the miracle of seeing your garden grow in the spring, the miracle of any joys, any emotions, the miracle of seeing death to life. What are we doing about it? Are we witnessing? Are we speaking it? Are we sharing it? Are we inviting people to that table, to the table of plenty, to the banquet feast? That's our faith. That's what Jesus asked us to do. His last thing he asked us to do in every gospel is the same. Remember what he said, go forth, meaning action, move, and make disciples of all nations. That's what I'm doing with that encounter with St. Padre Pio.